All right, so on our last video, I was um, trying to finish up. I was balancing this fifth single replacement reaction. So we had um, kicked out our hydrogen, and aluminum had paired up with sulfate. So four, we wrote our formula. We crisscrossed our charges. So we put a two here and a three here, and we were balancing. So I'm going to go back because I this is one that we have to reduce the way that I was balancing it. And some of you could have balanced it without needing to reduce, but I'm just showing, following these, the tricks that I showed y'all in class. So since this is an odd number, those are typically hard to work with. So I had taught y'all to go ahead and multiply by two. So that's going to give you six sulfates. So it's going to make it easier to work with that number six rather than working with the odd number three. So six sulfates here. So we'll put a six here to give us six sulfates there. Six times two is 12 hydrogens, so put a six here to give you 12 hydrogens here, and two times two is four to give you four aluminums. All right, now, when you balance your equation, you always wanna double check your coefficients. So if they can be reduced, you would you do want to reduce it. All of these are divisible by two, so your final balanced equation is gonna actually be a two, three, three, one. So that will be your answer for the balancing, and of course, some of you could have gotten that without um, what I had here, but that's okay, as long as your final answer is 2331. All right, let's look at our last type of reaction. We're gonna be predicting the products of this double replacement reaction. Now, these are really pretty simple to do. You don't have to refer to your activity series. Um, we're not gonna worry so much about our solubility rules here, so we're just gonna go ahead and just double replace these. Remember, these are always gonna be aqueous, and they're gonna involve ionic compounds, so I'm gonna put parentheses around my polyatomics just to make it easier to identify them. And, you know, going back to the analogy that I gave y'all in class, you have two um, compounds here. So this is like couple and a couple. So like barium is dancing with chlorine, potassium is dancing with carbonate in this example. The way that the double replacements always pair up is the outer two come together. So barium and carbonate are gonna come together on the product side, and then the inner two are gonna to come together. So potassium and chlorine. Now again, you don't bring over subscripts. Um, you figure out your formula by crisscrossing your charges. Now, the only exception to that is if it's a polyatomic ion, you're gonna bring that whole ion over because carbonate is CO3 with a negative two charge. You're gonna bring over carbonate, but you're not gonna bring over subscripts just because they're over here. So let's pair them up. Barium and carbonate come together. So barium and carbonate. And now barium has a positive two charge. Refer to your periodic table to verify that, but positive two for barium. Carbonate's always a minus two. Plus two minus two cancels, so that is gonna be the correct formula for barium carbonate. Now potassium and chlorine. Remember to put potassium first in the formula because your metals have to come first. Okay and Cl. Again, that's K and Cl. It's very hard to read there, but anyway. All right, KCl. Positive one for potassium, negative one for chlorine, charges cancel. So now you're ready to balance the skeleton equation. So let's go back and check it. We got one barium here, one barium here, two chlorines here. So we should come back and put a two in front of the potassium chloride. That's going to give me two chlorines. It also gives me two potassiums. So look, and you've got two potassiums on this side. You have one carbonate here and one carbonate there. So one, 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 two is your balanced equation. All right, let's look at number two. Outer joins with outer. So iron and hydroxide are gonna to come together and calcium and sulfur are gonna to come together. Now, you do need to figure out what charge to label iron, and you do that by looking back on this side and deciding what charge it crossed over over here. So we're going to need to do that. Let's pair them up. Fe and OH come together as a new couple. Iron's dancing with hydroxide. Which iron is it? Well, if you look back over here at this formula, remember, sulfur is always a negative 2 charge. So since we don't see any subscripts, we know this is a reduced formula. So that, that means that iron must have been a plus two charge over here. So it's iron two ion that we're using. So if he's a plus two and hydroxide's a minus one always, and he is, crisscross your charges. The one comes down and the two comes down. So remember to erase any charges in your final formula. So FeOH2 is a formula. 
and now calcium and sulfur are going to come together. Ca and S, remember metal goes first. Calcium is a positive 2, sulfur is a negative 2. So that's the formula for calcium sulfide. Now go back and balance your equation. We have one iron here, one iron here, two hydroxides here, two hydroxides here, one calcium here, one calcium here, one sulfur here, and one sulfur here. So this equation is balanced as it is written. So you can put about or you could put 1, 1, 1, 1. All right, let's look at our third example, and this will be our last example for this. I think um, these are pretty easy to catch on to. So again, outer is going to join with outer. Inner is going to join with inner. Pairing them up. Now, H and OH. I'm going to continue to write this as HOH, which we know this is water. But remember, it's easier to balance these reactions if you write your water as HOH. If you happen to have a compound on the opposite side of the reaction that contains hydroxide. So I'm going to leave water as HOH here, and I encourage you to do that just to help you balance it more efficiently. All right, hydrogen's a plus one, hydroxide's a minus one, charges cancel. So we leave it HOH. Now calcium and chlorine come together. Remember, calcium's your metal, so calcium has to come first. Remember, when you're dancing, the boys are supposed to leave. In my analogy, the metals are our boys. So calcium and chlorine come together. Calcium's a plus two charge, chlorine's a minus one charge. So when you crisscross your charges, you get CaCl2. Again, make sure that you erase any charges so your final formula is CaCl2. All right, now balance it. As you look over here, you see you have two hydroxides. So I'm going to go ahead and put a two in front of the water. That's going to give me two hydroxides. It also gives me two hydrogens. So come over here and put a two in front of the hydrochloric acid. That gives me two chlorines now. So look, and you already have two chlorines. You have one calcium and one calcium. So two, one, two, one. All right, that is our final example. And now you should be able to do the final.